Hello, my name is Kathleen Lesson. I'm a certified lymphedema therapist and board certified massage therapist. Um, I practice in San Diego, California. We're here at my studio now. And this video is for massage therapists that are going to CLT school and wanting to use that training to help people after plastic surgery reduce their swelling, uh, reduce their fibrosis with manual lymphatic drainage, with deeper techniques, and with the things that they learn in CLT school. So this is kind of like, I'd love for you to watch this before you go to your CLT training. And then so you can have an eye, have it at top of the mind, like this is what I should ask. This is the things that I should pay attention to. So these are our two things that I use and I'll have a bunch of show and tell and we'll look at those a little bit later. Um, but let's go over uh, the massage first. So first thing, I, the most valuable thing I learned um, is that it can be moved right over. So the massage that you use um, to help people with a lymphedema diagnosis is the exact same massage that I use, um, the base of that massage in my, um, in how I help people after plastic surgery. So definitely the first week or two um, is dedicated to that main, good manual lymphatic drainage. Um, and then I just use, uh, especially the anastomosis. So the massage that you learn, you'll definitely use. Um, we, we use the anastomosis as well. So definitely learn how to make a good anastomosis. Um, and they taught us that. I, I took the close lymphedema training. Um, lymphedema therapist training. Uh, they're one of the big four schools. So that's Acoles, Close, Norton, and Vodder are the big four schools. Um, and they have, I think you'll get a good experience with any of those uh, schools in, in taking the skills that you learned there and moving them over um, pretty easily to the uh, plastic surgery clientele. So the massage works, the anastomosis work. So I like to think of them as um, wherever there's uh, the lymph nodes were removed. We move the anast we use an anastomosis to move the swelling to a different parts of lymph nodes. So how does that look if we're having plastic surgery? Um, so if someone has a tummy tuck, um, everything superior to that tummy tuck incision um, should be moved by anastomosis to the axilla because there's the bridges out. They they cut the lymphatic though they didn't hurt the lymph nodes at all, they temporarily cut all the, most all of the lymphatic vessels, um, especially the, the uh, um, initial lymphatics, the superficial ones. Um, so I've had very good, very good um, experience um, taking all that swelling and putting it up to the axilla. So it's exactly the same as we would do if someone had uh, lymph nodes removed in the inguinal area and we're moving with that anastomosis up, up to the axilla. Um, what else? If someone has a, a breast augmentation and they're having a lot of swelling, I'll definitely um, start to move that swelling down and try to push all the swelling to the inguinal area. If they just had a breast augmentation and maybe some liposuction. Um, so like that's what I would do definitely if I have someone after the um, reconstructive surgery and they had some liposuction, had a fat transfer, all of the lymphatic fluid I am directing, um, I am directing to the inguinal ligament, even like up here where you would, if it's above the umbilicus, you know that that would generally go up here. I would move it down to the inguinal ligament because we may have impaired lymph nodes here um, because of previous surgery or because of the current surgery, the lymph nodes, if they do have all their lymph nodes, they're working hard because they had some breast augmentation as well. Um, so those are just two of the, the ideas. If you're looking into more individual surgeries, I have online classes to get more into those details, but this is just the class to say, you know, learn the anastomosis and this is kind of why, um, this is how you're going to apply it. Um, so what else? So let's look at some show and tell. So when we have, um, when you get into the compression, um, I really was like, I went through it because I didn't know really what I was going to do when I was a CLT. So I'm telling you the mistakes I made so you don't have to make them. Um, I, I went through it and I learned this kind of stuff, um, but I wasn't really passionate about learning it, uh, the compression side, because I knew that I would not use it. Um, but I still wanted to learn everything else about it being a CLT. And I actually have learned, use a lot of the, the things that I learned um, from the lymphedema therapy school. 
so what is it? First of all, let me get my scissors. Um, so you'll ha you can buy this gray foam. I have a large amount of gray foam in my office. I will give people um, like lipo foam, which comes in a rectangle, and I'll tell them they can cut their lipo foam. Um, they can cut it into different shapes, and then if I have um, a piece of stubborn swelling that I want to really help, I'll take a gray foam and cut it and make a custom cut for the client. Um, so this is one of the interesting things that even you'll learn, so make sure you pay attention to it, um, because this really helped me as, as two as well. Um, is the idea of like mitering. I don't know what they call it, but I call mitering because it's like a miter saw. Um, so you see how I'm cutting a little piece off. I'm cutting the edge off. Um, ideally, this will be not so good, but ideally it's at that 45 degree angle. So the foam is at an angle here. It's not straight up and down. This can really help clients who say, I have the foam, but it leaves an indent in my skin. So you can miter their foam like this. Teach them how, teach, teach your clients, first of all, like that the foam doesn't have to be a rectangle. They can cut it to fit their body. Um, just because it came out of the machine as a rectangle, human beings are not rectangles. We learn how to custom cut our foams in CLT school. So you will be really, really familiar and comfortable with arts and craft school. Um, so we know that in between the foam and the skin should be stockinette. So I also have gotten um, just off of Amazon um, stockinette. You can get stockinette off of Amazon. You can get it off of some of the big websites. Um, some of the websites that sell a lot of things that I'll show you is, um, what is it? Uh, Compression Guru is a good one. They have good prices. Bandages Plus, Lymphedema Products. So there's several websites out there that will let you purchase the items, that will let clients purchase the items. Um, so that's the foam. Definitely um, check out the foam, make foam your friend. And then once you get the idea that this is a tool that you can use, like the sky is really the limit. Um, I make like something I call a skinny foam. For this area, some clients who have um, are on the thinner side will have um, a really cut, a carved out waist where their, um, where the hip bone and the rib bone will be above and then the fat is actually indented here so they won't have enough compression here and then so they'll tend to be swelling because the garment is only going um, it can't go in from either of the uh, either of the bones so you can make a custom foam that I call a skinny foam that's about the circ that's about the length and width of their hand not your hand their hand um, and put it in there and they'll find that it really helps. Um, to control their swelling. Sometimes I have um, people who have swelling right here, um, especially if they did the upper abdomen, and that swelling can really be well controlled um, by Comprex, by a Comprex foam. So when you see these foams come out, um, this will be to treat fibrosis and go the kidneys will be to go into a sulcus. Um, like usually they'll use the kidneys here on the, uh, the leg when they're wrapping the foot. Kind of get an idea, get your hands on the kidney and see like where else could I put this? Could I put a kidney like right here? Um, could I put a kidney, could I cut a kidney? And that's it, the kidney, it doesn't have to be kidney shaped. It can be whatever shape you want it to be. Can I cut this piece of more intense foam than the gray foam and, and cut it and carve it and make it custom to my client? Um, and again, everything, the foam has to have the stockinette um, as the barrier, just the same way as we moisturize the skin, we put a stockinette on and then we're putting foam on and then we're wrapping the bandage. Um, edema wear is another thing. Um, edema wear is for the legs. I can use it for... The upper arms that people are having trouble with compression after the um, after the arm liposuction, and that's something to pay attention to. See where they're showing you when they're showing you the different products. Um, kind of get these ideas in your head. So this is like under the axilla. Um, this is a chip foam pad. If someone has liposuction here um, as part of their breast reduction. So they have a breast reduction and they'll have side boob here and they'll get liposuction. And I've had people say, you know, it's really tough here. It feels like a two by four. Can you put 
can you put some of this, um, or even looking for the smaller one, this one, the axilla one, can you put one that's specifically designed for the axilla right here underneath their compression garment, and this is going to help to reduce that um, swelling, that hard swelling if it goes into fibrosis, and especially if they have like some extra skin here, can you get that compression into the area um, with these garments and like suggest the garment to them. Um, and then there's some even uh, more like that Dope's Pit Pack, very, very intense garment made of cherry pits. Um, and then like the soft compress. So how can we use this if a client needs a little bit of extra support for their swelling um, in addition to their uh, compression garment? How can we use this? So every time you see something um, in the compression, kind of think to yourself, how can I use this that it's used for wrapping for people with lymphedema? How can I potentially use it for my clients? Because swelling comes in a million different varieties. No two clients really are alike. Um, so it's very exciting to be able to use these custom ideas. Um, and the other thing I really, really like this has been just a really great um, investment in my practice. It's the Juzo pressure monitor. So hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to see a pressure monitor um, if they're showing a pressure monitor in class. So what this does is um, when they're wrapping, you can put it inside the wraps and then it'll tell you in millimeters of mercury how intense the wrapping is on the leg. And you can actually see the difference um, if you have a if you have a graduated compression, you can see how the compression is more in certain parts of the garment and less in other parts of the garment. So this to traditional use, what they will tell you at Juzo officially, is you use it under, you wrap someone um, with, with the short stretch bandages and then you can see how much pressure those wraps are applying on the body, both when they're flexing the calf and they're not flexing the calf. What I use this for is I slide it right underneath their compression in their abdomen and I can tell how many millimeters of mercury that compression has. This is huge. This has been huge because it's a measurement. It's not them telling me whether it's tight. It's not me looking at it and saying whether it's tight. It's not me seeing how much recoil the elastic has because that's a product of the elastic, not whether it's actually giving them a good level of containment. And I can show them that you will get five extra millimeters of mercury compression if you add a foam to your current compression garment. Um, because a lot of people will wear the faja and they won't wear a foam on it. And if your faja gets loose, um, you need to either buy a smaller faja or you need to go to um, the seamstress and get it altered or you can add uh, a foams inside of it. Um, so foams are good for several reasons, which none of which they'll tell you in CLT school. Um, but foams are good for several reasons, but I really like this tool because it helps me to give a um, percentage. It helps me in my soap notes. I can say, you know, their compression is this many millimeters of mercury. And then they know whether it's too loose or too tight because very, very often if you're not used to being constricted by a garment, um, a garment that is not very tight seems very constrictive. So people will come in and say, look, this garment, like, it's really tight. My, my faja is really tight. I don't understand why I still have swelling. So this is an objective measurement that you can put it down and see how many millimeters of mercury of compression that they're actually having. So if you get a chance to um, get your hands on the compression monitor, kind of test it, kind of see how it is um, inside a garment, especially if someone is having, um, like, these are the Sigvaris, 20 to 30 socks. If someone is having compression socks on, you can put it down the compression sock and see how it would potentially interact with an elastic compression garment, um, which would be similar to someone's faja. So you can see that on the thigh, you can see it on the abdomen, on the arm, where, wherever it is. Um, you can measure their compression and then see week to week, how is the compression? Is it getting looser because they're getting smaller? Or do they need to wash their compression more because it's too loose and they don't wash their compression enough? And you'll learn a lot about compression garments and about how to keep a compression garment um, clean and how to keep it useful because the elastic um, 
if you do the wrong things with the compression garment, you can reduce the life and effectiveness of that compression garment. So you should definitely be learning that in the CLT school, um, asking those questions and seeing what do the CLTs, what does your teacher, your instructor tell her clients, him or her, their clients um, on how to successfully care for their compression garments with a lymphedema diagnosis. And much of that goes right over to how we tell our clients um, to handle their garments with uh, when it's a faha and they have compression, they have plastic surgery. Um, you have to wear your compression garments um, all for the majority of the day to get the benefits from it. You have to wash it regularly. You have to wash it and dry it according to the things on the tag because it's not one size fits all. Um, some garments want you to dry them. Some garments don't want to be in the dryer. Some garments are more effective if they're in a dryer and if you try to air dry them, they're less effective and many people are air drying them outside with exposure to the sunlight and that's actually breaking down the elastic. So there's a lot of different things that you have to understand. Some people are putting on the emollient lotion and then they're putting the garment on right after and the, the lotions are breaking down the elastic. Um, so all those things, uh, it's good to have that information when you go to your CLT class so you can give that information to your clients and be a better um, lymphatic drainage therapist because not only can you do you know about the massage but you know a little bit about the theories and ideas behind compression as well so these are my tips um, and definitely uh, have a, a great experience in the CLT school I really loved going through mine I'm still friends on Facebook with a number of other of the women who went through the classes um, with me and I love watching all of our careers flourish and um, if you want the specific tools that you can use um, to go right into uh, doing post-op care like how all there's a million questions that you'll have that they will just won't be able to answer because they're focused on lymphedema therapy they're not focused on post-op therapy in your class so if you want all those questions answered if you want a very clear idea on how to get use the skills that you just learn in CLT school and directly apply them. Um, I have several classes which are all qualified for Nictimba CEs. I'm a, an approved provider uh, for Nictimba and um, that will really help you to bridge that gap between you have these skills but these clients are different from what they were showing you in CLT school. You can definitely, you know, build a bridge and go right over there and have a really successful practice helping people after plastic surgery with manual lymphatic drainage. All right, have a good day.